What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I wanted to talk about my plans on the 11th of June, what I'm doing in terms of my trading plans, going over a couple of ETFs, a couple of stocks here, some crude oil ETFs, gold ETFs, some of these large cap stocks, I'm seeing a nice pullback on one in particular I'm going to be talking about um, in today's video, as well as just going over the pre-market futures, the market tech right now what am I personally seeing with about 23 minutes left in the market open and I'm not sure when I'm going to upload this video it may be um, right after the market opens it may be a couple of hours down the road we'll see obviously if you're watching it the video is uploaded so let's talk about very quickly the markets right now they're looking pretty green right the Nasdaq right now is up almost one percent another nice gap up overnight here on the Nasdaq up 70 points right now um, in terms of this future. The S&P 500 futures are up 17 points right now, back up into the 2900 level, up 0.61%. And the Dow Jones futures right now are up 0.6%, not as high as the other indexes that we track on this channel, but still a 0.6% gap up here pre-market um, for the futures are very, very nice. They're up 151 points. So like we've been talking about on this channel over the past couple of days, markets continue to rally day after day after day. Two positive catalysts that I don't want to spend too much time on are the Mexican tariffs, Mexico tariffs between the U.S. and Mexico. Those are not happening anymore. So that gapped up the markets over the weekend and we saw the potential rate cut the Fed is looking to impose here in the next couple of weeks. That was another catalyst in this big push-up and we've been talking about how markets are very overbought right now in my personal opinion just take a look at all the major markets on the RSI very overbought 82 is extremely overbought anything above 70 is extremely overbought so 82 is just ridiculous right for the Nat uh, for the Dow Jones here and if we go to the Nasdaq it's even worse guys we're almost getting out of the chart here we're literally at 84 on the RSI here you know this is in need of a pullback in my personal opinion the ES take a look at the ES I'm sure it's extremely overbought as well yes extremely overbought RSI at 80 just take a look at this we're in need of a pullback right and I get it we sold off for about a month we got that big sell-off this is like a rally that we've been needing but I still think it's a bit um overdone at this point there's still a lot of negative stuff surrounding the economy right now which I think makes this move a bit irrational so this morning guys um that's kind of my uh opinion right now on the um uh, overall markets at this point in time and this morning I'm watching of course these market ETFs they're always on my watch list for an impending pullback on the market here once it does happen because it will happen but the matter is when is it going to happen you know SQQQ which trades on the NASDAQ it goes up whenever the NASDAQ is going down and SPXS which goes up whenever the S&P is going down these two are going to be very good plays here here, and they're going to offer a lot of margin of profit. So those are two that I'm watching. I don't know if we'll get the pullback today or tomorrow. Who knows when it's going to happen, right? But I'm just waiting. I'm being ready and uh, with these two, and I'm looking to take advantage of them. So crude oil and uh, these natural gas and uh, what is this other one? This gold ETF. We're talking about these in today's video as well. So let's just get into it right now. So crude oil, we notice how on a technical basis here it's being rejected pretty strongly by that 50 SMA where we've been rejected at over the past couple of weeks and we've talked about how crude oil is not necessarily related to the overall market in terms of uh, price trend but we notice how it did correlate this past time um, when the markets dumped which is pretty interesting because markets dumped crude oil dumped as well and here we're at a point where either two things are going to happen Happen. We're going to get 
Push down further, we're going to get rejected by this 50 SMA, which would issue a downtrend or the continuation, rather, of the downtrend. Or if we break out of the 50 SMA uh, uh, simple moving average here, that could be a pretty bullish move where we may be filling the gap up to the 180 SMA, which could give crude oil at that point a nice 7-8% room to run so at that point if we did get the breakout guys take a look here at uwt uwt is an etf that goes up whenever crude oil is going up so that would push uwt above the 50 sma as well that would issue a breakout and since this is a 3x leverage gtf this one has about a 20 to 25 percent margin of profit opposed to the seven percent that crude oil has to offer and gold here the gold futures we talked about a point yesterday that's very critical on gold here 1330 was that point the point of support we broke that today guys and now we're testing the other point we talked about in yesterday's video which was the 50 simple moving average support and if we break that at this point we're going to be going down to 1320 so i would say at this point in time where gold is is a very critical point as well just like crude oil it can go to either two ways here at this point we break down below that's going to be a bearish move jdst is going to be a very solid play here and jdst is going up whenever gold is going off in specifics here uh gdx is what it tracks in specifics so whenever gdx is selling off jdst is going up as you guys can see right and whenever um gold let's say gold uh bounces on the 50 sma here let's say it pops out of 1330 and continues to run up maybe test 1340 that would be a bullish move you know at that point gdx is going to pop up aggressively right because it follows gold and then jnug is going to end up doing very well again as you guys can see we pulled down from 890 roughly roughly nine dollars actually exactly nine dollars is where we ended up peaking roughly you know we pulled down now we're testing the 50 sma and this is also one on my watch list for an impending uh bounce on gold if that scenario does end up playing out right so those are a couple of etfs here that i am watching this morning now that we are seeing some real-time action as they are moving here pre-market hours it's always interesting uh to make videos when the market's actually moving because most of the videos i make are after the market closes like about 6 p.m 7 p.m eastern standard so um a lot of the time the markets and uh stuff's kind of cooling down at that point right so let's just talk about quickly here um a couple of stocks that i'm watching in particular one that someone called out in the group i forget who it was but it was mcdonald stock ticker symbol mcd and mcd this is a stock that's been on an absolute tear over the past couple of months guys take a look from 160 all the way up to about 206 that's about a 20 percent move in one of the largest uh businesses out there um long-lasting businesses out there it's crazy to see a quote-unquote value stock move 20 30 percent in a year when that's not really typical of these stocks right because these are you know like i said they're not growing as heavily as some of these growth stocks which grow their prices their stock prices very quickly and it's kind of surprising in my opinion honestly but mcdonald's nonetheless is a very amazing company here that we topped out at at about $207 per share. And notice how over the past couple of months, it's obvious that it's been on an uptrend, riding all the moving averages, making higher highs, higher lows, all of that good stuff. And now we notice how we pull down and we're holding that support, which is the 50 SMA, which has been a support over the past couple of months. So this is a very good sign here. And we're getting the gap up here pre-market um, with about 15 minutes left. It seems like if we go on the one day, one minute, we are trending up here pre-market. Yep, you guys can see it. We're at about $202 or something, th something like that right around that area here. So if McDonald's does end up pushing here what i'm going to be watching when the market opens here is mcdonald's going to continue this push if it continues this push that tells me that 
the bounce on the 180 or rather the 50 SMA has been confirmed and that would be a good entry point in my personal opinion if it continues to rally but let's say you know we get a pullback at that point if we get a pullback what would be a good entry point there would be a retest on the 50 SMA if it retests and bounces at a higher low that's actually an even better uh, entry point than the first one that we talked about so those are just a couple of things that I'm watching here on um, McDonald's it offers about a 2% profit here margin and it's just been doing very well over these volatile times that we've been in so this could be this could very well fill that gap guys so those are just a couple that I'm watching in terms of stocks and ETFs maybe Tesla let's see Tesla's at a point in time now where it's gapping up yet again seven points here pre-market putting us at a point where this is very interesting guys because I've been saying like when Tesla breaks out of this 180 SMA that's going to be a pretty uh, pretty good factor for a breakout and if you couple that with a positive change in the narrative this can go to $300 per share again I believe very quickly because think about it if we get the technical breakout that's a very good confirming sign on the technical side right and if we get good um, an earnings report model uh, uh, production models come in very very nicely you know they, they turn a profit or something very um, positive that changes the narrative that's good on the fundamental side and that can end up blasting off the stock, which I'm personally waiting for. But at this point in time, we haven't gotten any of the positive news yet. So I do expect Tesla to get rejected here, maybe for a little pullback, maybe for a really big pullback back down to the 180s. I don't know if that will happen. I don't want to call that out. But the RSI is a bit alarming right now. The run's been a bit overextended. And again, if we don't get any positive news at this point, I still think Tesla has more um, downside here, at least in the very, very short term. I'm talking up until the next earnings report, right? So let um, that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you all in the next video. Let me know how you end up doing today in the comment section down below. I would love to know. Let me know what your opinion is on the stock market right now and what are you doing? Are you buying up stocks? Are you selling? Are you just staying in cash? I would love to know. So drop that comment. Leave that like if you enjoyed the, uh, the video. Again, it supports me a lot. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Peace out, guys.